Tonight at 6 p.m. Eastern over on Jaguar Gator 8, a new college football video drops. Also at 9 p.m. Eastern, join me live on Twitch where we'll talk about anything and everything in our weekly Q&A stream. Link to join below. And now, on with our feature presentation. In life, it is important to communicate, and I think that goes without saying. You're not going to be able to get anywhere in life if you can't communicate, and you can't effectively get your point across. And while this is true for every aspect of life, it's especially true when you're making a big change that is affecting and impacting tens of thousands of people, especially in the face of a natural disaster. When you're changing the date of a game and trying to deal with not just the logistical elements from that, but the logistical elements of a hurricane, you need to be effective in your messaging and need to clearly communicate to all parties involved, especially the fans who have paid money to show up, what the new game plan is. In other words, you don't want to do what the Miami Dolphins did in 2004. On opening day of the 2004 season, the Dolphins decided that they were going to move their game against the Tennessee Titans up one day to Saturday in order to avoid a hurricane coming into the area. Naturally, this led to a ton of questions about how the Dolphins were going to be doing this, since changing the day of a game so close to the event poses a ton of challenges. And team president Eddie Jones decided to respond to the challenges of this by clearly answering a grand total of none of those questions, which left many fans confused and left many fans staying home furious at the lack of communication. This video is a prime example of what not to do from a public relations standpoint, and nearly two decades later, it's tough to imagine that a person in this position of power was so bad at communicating this message. This is the story behind the worst messaging in the history of the Miami Dolphins. Before I talk about the actual incident in question, we need some context to understand the game that was going to be taking place, as well as why the game was being moved from its original starting day and time in the first place. To open up the 2004 season, we had a Week 1 matchup on our hands between two AFC teams that were some of the best in football the year before. In one corner, you had the Tennessee Titans, who were coming off of a great 2003 season where they went 12-4 and, and made it to the divisional round before falling at the hands of the New England Patriots. The Titans had established themselves as one of the top teams in football, as in four of the last five seasons, they made it all the way to the divisional round. As a side note, to learn more about that 2004 Titans team, and a crazy strategy that head coach Jeff Fisher tried in a game against the Indianapolis Colts later in the season that actually worked, click the card in the upper right corner. And in the other corner, you have the Miami Dolphins, who were coming off of a 10-6 season where, even though they missed the playoffs, they played well and ended the season by winning five of their final seven games. They have the best record of any team to miss the postseason, which is not exactly a record that you want to have, but the Dolphins were a good team nonetheless. And much like the Titans, the Dolphins were consistently competing. They hadn't had a losing record since 1988, and had a winning record in each of the last seven seasons, including every season so far under head coach Dave Wanstead. Now, there was some controversy entering the 2004 season at the quarterback position, as the Dolphins traded a second-round pick to the Philadelphia Eagles for A.J. Feely, and then inexplicably did not name him the starter for opening day, with Jay Fiedler getting the nod. This led to a ton of criticism, which made that Week 1 matchup all the more appealing, because you wondered if Fiedler got off to a bad start, how quickly he would get pulled for the new acquisition. This was a highly anticipated game featuring two teams that a lot of people had high expectations for at the start of the season. However, what was supposed to be a Sunday afternoon game had a giant wrench thrown into it when a hurricane was approaching Miami. It wasn't the first time that a hurricane impacted the start to the Dolphins' season, as two years ago, I talked about how a hurricane forced the Dolphins to take a week one bye in 1992, which you can learn more about by clicking the card in the upper right corner. And it definitely wouldn't be the last time that it happened, as we saw in 2017 when the Dolphins, originally scheduled to open up the season at home against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, had to take a week one bye. But while there are many things that the NFL is fine going up against, there's one thing that they won't mess with, and understandably so, and that was a hurricane, as this was a matter of safety and possible life and death. And in 2004, a fierce hurricane was approaching the United States, and was on a path toward Florida, and in particular, Miami. Hurricane Ivan was going through the Caribbean, and by the time it passed Cuba and the Cayman Islands, was still at a Category 5 storm. By the time of the opening weekend of the NFL season, the hurricane had already caused billions of dollars in damages, including $1.2 billion in Cuba, 
1.1 billion in Granada, and over 2.8 billion in the Cayman Islands, with 64 people dying in the Caribbean as a result of the hurricane, 39 of those people being in Granada alone. And it was clear by this point that when Ivan was going to hit the United States in the foreseeable future, that it was going to be a relatively strong hurricane causing a lot of damage. Which is obviously not good, but is even worse when you consider that Florida had already been hit by a hurricane a week before in Hurricane Francis, which caused $9.8 billion in damages in the United States and led to 37 people dying in Florida. By Wednesday, September 8th, forecasters were expecting Ivan, which was not decreasing in strength, to hit Florida, and the NFL was looking at contingency plans to move the game between the Titans and the Dolphins elsewhere, including Nashville, Tampa Bay, and Jacksonville, the latter two of which had their NFL teams and the Buccaneers and the Jaguars on the road that week. They were even talking about postponing the game to later in the season, giving both teams a week one bye, although this was not ideal for obvious reasons, and neither team wanted this. By Thursday, with Hurricane Ivan reaching speeds of up to 140 miles per hour, the forecast was that by Sunday night, it would be hitting Florida. This led the NFL to come up with a plan that seemed to be the best case scenario, as it allowed the Dolphins to keep their home game and would allow both teams to not be forced to take a week one bye and have to play 16 consecutive weeks. The plan was to move the game up from Sunday to Saturday at 1 o'clock Eastern, with the game being regionally televised so as not to interfere with college football ratings, and so as not to conflict with the Sports Broadcasting Act of 1961 which is still a good law today. It would allow fans to be able to go to the game, while still having time to be able to evacuate Miami before the storm hit. If the storm was supposed to hit Sunday night, then they could go to the game and leave either that night or Sunday and be safe and sound. Seems like a good plan that no one had a problem with. It was the safe, logical solution. However, this raises the obvious question. How do you account for a change like this? Let's say I'm a fan of the Dolphins and I'm debating whether or not to go to this game in its new time slot. What if I want to get out of Miami before that, or I have another obligation that Saturday that means I can't attend the game anymore? Traffic is probably going to be brutal with tons of cars leaving the city, since there's only one way out of Florida, and that's north. So now add all the fans from the stadium, and is it worth it to go? Fans had concerns, and very legitimate and valid concerns, about the situation, and whether it was worth it to go to the game. Fortunately for them, Miami Dolphins team president Eddie Jones was here to answer all of them. And by answer all of them, I mean answer absolutely none of them. Because when Jones was asked about what his team was going to do now that the change was official, he took about the worst approach possible to answering the questions and calming the concerns of the fans. Prepare yourselves for a classic lesson in how not to do public relations. First question, and it's probably the one on most people's minds who might have had other obligations at Saturday and now won't be able to attend, or fans that were evacuating early. Will fans be allowed to get refunds on their ticket if they can't attend, or don't want to attend? Seems like a pretty straightforward question. You either answer this by saying yes, and then describe the steps that the fans can take to get said refunds, or you answer by saying no, that sales are final, and can even say precedent from other times that the Dolphins moved games on short notice like in Week 9 of the 1997 season, when they moved the game against the Chicago Bears from a Sunday to a Monday, because the Florida Marlins were playing in the World Series in the same stadium. This is a layup of a question that is instrumental in influencing what people are going to do. So how did Jones answer? He answered in two parts. He started off by saying, Our team is generally successful at home because of our fans' support. So I hope that because we have moved the game to a window, where I think we won't have too many bad weather problems, that our fans will come out and support us. What the heck kind of an answer is that? This is the real-life equivalent of the Family Guy episode, where Mayor Adam West answers a question at a town hall by not answering the question at all. Mayor West, if re-elected, would you increase the frequency of garbage pickup? Well, citizen, that's an excellent question, and I thank you for it. I think it's great we live in a town where you can ask questions. Because without questions, we just have answers. And an answer without a question is a statement. You literally answer nothing. Can fans refund their ticket? Well, we have the best fans in the world, and we love how much our fans support us. Okay, but you still didn't answer the question. Fortunately or I guess unfortunately because of just how awful this answer was, 
he gave a second part. And in this second part, he still didn't answer the question. Jones said, having said that, we're going to be attentive to any hardship situations that arise. Again, what does this mean? Are you going to have refunds or not? What are hardship situations that arise? Do you need a doctor's note or something? Are you hiring an official or someone to evaluate whether someone's excuse for not being able to attend the game warrants a refund? And this was literally how Jones ended the question. He answered a question about whether you'd be able to get a refund by refusing to answer the part about fans getting refunds. Just saying, we know there are hardships, but we have the best fans in the NFL. A whole lot of nothing is what that statement is. But let's suppose you do want to go to the game, but you know that immediately after the game, you've got to go and evacuate the state. You're going to the game with everything packed in your trunk, so you can attend the game in the afternoon, maybe get a bite to eat afterwards, and then drive out of Florida and stay somewhere, either with a family member or in a hotel, motel, Holiday Inn, until it's safe to return. How is traffic going to be handled? And Jones was asked this very question, being asked by a reporter, are there any changes you can make so that fans can get in and out of the stadium more quickly? Again, a relatively easy question, and one that should not need such a roundabout answer. Well, guess what Jones said? A whole lot of nothing, that's what. Because Jones said, I've always felt we have a good system for getting people in and out of the game, and we have moved the game out to an early enough point that we will avert the bad weather and that people can get in and out of there and do what they need to do. How are you this bad at answering questions? It is a yes or no question. You didn't need to answer in a novel. Again, what specifically are you doing? You can at least elaborate on, if you're not changing anything, why you feel so strongly in your system. Not this, not this absolute nonsense answer. So just to recap where we are, if you have tickets to the game and you're debating about whether or not you should go now that the date got moved and there's a giant hurricane coming your way, you may or may not be able to get a refund because your team's fan support is great, and your team has a good system for getting people in and out, although they don't elaborate on what that system is. I don't get how you can become a team president, where you have to be able to communicate with people, and yet be this bad at communicating with people. The messaging here is awful, and when the game, which was originally a sellout, featured anywhere from 15,000 to 20,000 empty seats, Partly because your messaging was so bad, it's not hard to see why. People demand answers when they're making decisions, especially potentially life or death decisions like this one in terms of how early to evacuate for the hurricane. And if you're not giving them answers, and you genuinely think that doing this rah-rah talk where you talk about how great your organization is, but don't offer concrete answers and solutions, then I don't know what to tell you. You're just incompetent. The only thing worse than how bad the Dolphins were communicating what they were doing off the field was how bad the Dolphins were at playing on the field. For the 50,000 or so people that went to the game in spite of Jones' messaging, as I can't think of a single person that saw these comments and actually became convinced to go to the game, they saw an absolutely atrocious display of football. The Titans won this game 17-7, and it wasn't even that close, as the only score of the game for Miami came with three and a half minutes left, when the Titans were up by three possessions and the game was over. You could even argue that the Dolphins players evacuated the city on Friday night, because I'm not sure, judging by this performance, that they were present on Saturday. Jay Fiedler started the game and went 5 for 13 with 42 yards passing, no touchdowns, two interceptions, and a passer rating of 8, which is worse than if he did nothing but spike the ball into the ground on every single play. The Dolphins turned it over three times, allowed Chris Brown to run for 100 yards and over 5 yards per carry, allow the Titans as a team to average over 5 yards per carry, and on their first 10 drives of the game, had 5 punts, 3 picks, and a missed field goal, with 8 of their first 10 drives failing to pick up a first down and going less than 10 yards. That is abysmal. So what's the moral of the story here? Communicate! It's not hard. When people have questions that they need answered, for the love of all things good and pure, answer them! Doing what Eddie Jones did here helps absolutely no one. Jones retired after the 2004 season after serving as an executive for the team since 1988, so he served over a decade and a half with the organization. So this was one of his lasting impressions on the team, and was one of his final public appearances before hanging it up. And man, what a horrible final impression this was. 
If you're ever doing public relations, a helpful piece of advice would be to ask yourself what Eddie Jones would do, and then do literally the exact opposite. Get your official Jaguar Gator 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com, and be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at JaguarGator9. To see college football videos, subscribe to JaguarGator8. To see highlight videos of players throughout the history of the NFL, subscribe to JG9 Highlights. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping get the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.